Hey guys, this is a pretty long video, so I went ahead and added timestamps in the description down below. Uh, so yeah, let's get started. Alright guys, so today we'll be doing an unboxing, review, and complete installation guide of the T238 MOSFET. So recently, I've been seeing this MOSFET being used quite a bit, so I decided to pick one up myself to see if it's any good. The reason this MOSFET is so appealing is because of its price. Compared to Gate Titans, BTC Spectres, and Leviathans that cost $100 plus, this MOSFET unit costs only $45 and comes with basically the same number of features as the higher end MOSFETs. This is the 3.1 version and it will fit any version 3 gearbox. Depending on your gun, your gearbox may or may not need slight modification to make this unit fit, but for the most part, this is a drop in MOSFET. Alright, let's get started with the unboxing. In the box, we have a nice patch and of course, we have the user manual. We also have an alcohol wipe as well as the sector gear stickers. Here we have a little baggie full of parts that we will use later in the installation process. Now let's take a look at the MOSFET. This unit uses optical sensors to detect your input which eliminates many mechanical components of your gearbox. This is really nice because this means that there are less things to break or fail in your gearbox. Since we're going to be installing this in an airsoft gun, we're going to have to remove these two wires right here. These wires are meant for gel blasters, so you can either go ahead and just cut them off or solder them off. Okay guys, so here's the manual. Um, it's gonna give you a bunch of information. Here we got the contents. Again, a little bit hard to read because I do not understand that language. <laughs> yep, tension, description. There you go, I'll pause that if you guys wanna read it. Or I mean, you can pause it if you wanna read it. <laughs> So, on to the next page, we have the main parameters for the version 2 or the version 3. Again, let me just lay that out there if you guys want to pause and take a read at that. Alright. And the functions, that's what we want to know. So, this can support up to 14.8 volts of input. Um, has low battery voltage protection um, that's always nice to have this has a MOSFET of course auto loading function okay that's designed for gel blasters so we don't need to take a look at that okay we have overheat protection here block up protection um, it includes multiple shooting modes uh, so I guess that's for your uh, binary trigger and bursts and also has pre-cocking, which is a really nice thing to have. Um, you know, pre-cocking, probably one of the best things you can have in a MOSFET. It will help you out in any situation uh, when you're playing. Uh, we got here active braking. That's also pretty good, but usually unnecessary, depending on your motor and whatnot. So we'll see how that works. Um, there you go, that's active braking again. Adjustable fire rate. Now that's pretty interesting, I'm not sure how they did that, but um, yeah, if you want to adjust your fire rate to be more realistic, for sure, you can do that. Um, so yeah, it uses the same safety mechanism as the original gearbox, I'm not sure why they spelled safe that way, pretty interesting, but yeah, <laughs> this model can be programmed. Yeah, so that's again the... Uh, Oh, this is the modes actually, we're not on the functions anymore. So these are the modes, you got safe, semi, and automatic. Um, both of which, semi and automatic, can be programmed to the different burst settings. Requirements. Okay. There you go, if you want to read that, go ahead and pause it. Alright. So, the installation. Alright, so this installation here, I'm going to be reading this by myself right before the next part, which will be installation. 
So if you guys want to take a read of that, go ahead and pause it and uh, have a read. Let's take the few last parts here. Oh, this is how to program it actually. That would probably be pretty helpful. There you go. Oh, look at that. Now this is what we want to see. This is the complete programming menu, I guess we could call it. So yeah, I'll take a look at that. And that's the last page. So, yeah, let's move on to the installation guide. Okay, so very quickly, let's take a look at what's in the bag here. Um, these stickers are actually for your uh, selector plate. So you need to put that on your selector plate and that's going to allow you to go from safe, semi, and auto. You also have these shrink tubes for when you're doing your, um, I guess when you put your connectors on. And yeah, so you got your connectors here, your, what do you call these? I guess connector teeth if you will, I don't know. And you also have speed connectors. These are great for uh, replacing the uh, connectors on your motors because those break quite often when you're uh, taking your gun apart uh, a lot. So always nice to have these lying around. And these are for gel blasters, these little spring things. I believe that's for the magazine. So we don't need that for airsoft. We have these foam pads here. I read online that you actually don't need this for the version 3, so I'm not sure why they included it. But we have them, so we'll see if we can put it to use. And we also have this little plastic washer here. So now let's move on to the installation guide. Hey guys, so the first step we're going to do is the soldering. As I said before, we don't need these two wires for airsoft, so we're going to go ahead and just remove them from the board. So yeah, an important thing to notice is that uh, for the red one, there's actually two wires attached to this point. So make sure you only uh, remove the one uh, thin wire. Okay, now I'm just gonna go ahead and solder on some Dean's connectors. Again, the T238, for the most part, is a drop-in MOSFET. To install it, you first need to open and remove all the internals from your gearbox. This unit replaces your original trigger and cutoff lever, so when you're done with the installation, you'll have those parts left over. What keeps the unit in place is the screw for the cutoff lever, so make sure you hang on to it. Let's go ahead and feed the wires through the gearbox and put the unit into place. Hopefully you guys can see this, but the screw hole protrudes pretty far out. This allows for a lot of play, which is really bad because this means the MOSFET will be able to bounce around when you're shooting the gun. To fix this issue, I made a little washer out of electrical tape. This will make up for the difference in thickness and keep the MOSFET solid in place. Alright, so here's the washer I just made. Just go ahead and slip that onto the screw and screw it in. Now, your MOSFET should have very minimal movement. It may move up and down a little bit because it's so long and there's only one screw holding it in, but just try your best to make sure there's as little movement as possible.
Now let's move on to the stickers. These are the Sector Gear stickers. If you have a single Sector Gear, use one of these stickers here. So let's take one off and put it on. But first, make sure you clean the Sector Gear with the alcohol wipe prior to putting the sticker on. Now the next thing you gotta do is the selector plate sticker. Version 3 selector plates are really long and flimsy, so you have to play around with the placement of the sticker a little bit until you get it right. Your goal is to cover this sensor right here when you switch between firing modes. For me, what I found worked really well is when the end of the sticker is around 2.6cm from the very end of the selector plate. So I'll go ahead and stick that right on. And again, you're going to have to play around uh, with the placement of this sticker um, because every gun is different and uh, yeah, so let's put it all back together. Alright guys, so some preliminary testing. Uh, sorry about the lighting. Uh, the sensors are really light sensitive, so I had to turn the lights away. Uh, we're using an 11-1 uh, 1300 milliamp. And here it is. So when the sensor is not covered, it's in semi-auto. When you cover the sensor, you're going to hear a beep, and you're in full auto. There we go. So now let's uh, put everything in. Alright guys, sorry about the lighting. Uh, the sensors are light sensitive, so I had to turn off my main light here. But uh, yeah, let's uh, give it a shot now that's fully assembled. Now we're going to be using an 11-1 1300 milliamp battery. Let's plug it in. You can hear some beeps. So when uh, the sensor is not covered by the white sticker you put on earlier, it's going to be in semi-automatic. So let's give it a shot. Let's the trigger finger. <laughs> I'll go to fully automatic. You'll hear a beep, and now I can. Uh, there you go. Then safe is all the way at the front, but the uh, safety mechanism isn't here, so it's still gonna be in semi auto. Um, yeah, that's basically how it is. Uh, I can't put it in the gun and show you guys, or else the video will get age restricted. Uh, so that's the only reason I'm, <laughs> I'm just showing you guys the bare gearbox. Um, but yeah, let me show you guys how to program this. 
All right, so I had to put the gearbox in the uh, lower receiver because uh, when the gearbox was just out and about, the light was really bugging out the optical sensors. So yeah, I just put in the lower receiver and now it's all good to go. So let's look at how to program it. Um, so from the factory, it's set to have a G36 style uh, selector. So basically that means if you're using an 8K, the metal would be semi and then the bottom would be full auto, but real AKs aren't like that. Uh, the real AKs uh, have full auto in the middle and semi on the bottom. So they actually thought of that and they put the eighth program, eighth programming mode to uh, let you switch between G36 style and AK47 style selectors. So as an example to, as an example of programming, I'll show you guys how to select the AK47 style. So let's do that. Basically what you have to do is since it's the eighth option or eighth mode, you're going to wait, you're going to enter programming mode, wait for it to be eight times in a row then hold the trigger. And then once you're in that uh, mode, you're going to wait for it to beep twice, which is the AK-47 or whichever one you want to choose and then hold the trigger and yeah, it'll be set to that. And then from there, you'll be good to go. So um, that's probably a little bit difficult to understand, but when I show you how to do it, hopefully it'll make more sense. So to enter programming mode, you're going to first want to go to full automatic because this means you'll have to wait less time. If you put it in semi, you're going to have to hold it for 10 seconds. If it's in auto, you'll only have to wait three seconds. So plug in your battery and pull the trigger. You're in programming mode now and you're going to wait for it to beep eight times in a row. So that's three. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Pull the trigger. Now you're in the eighth programming mode and you want AK 47. So if you miss it, don't worry, it's gonna keep cycling through them. So it'd be twice, you can hold it. There, now it's set. So now it is following the AK-47 selector type. So top is safe, middle is fully auto. And then I actually set the semi-automatic to three round burst. So as you'll see, the bottom is three round burst. But of course you can set it to semi. It's actually uh, from the factory set to semi, but I just uh, set it to three round burst to, to play around with it. Um, but yeah, that's how to program it. And yeah, that concludes the whole tutorial. Hopefully it was helpful. And yeah, I'll catch you next time.